morning, we turn to 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Lord, we thank you for your holy and inspired word. Lord, we pray that as we open your word together this morning, you would speak to us through these words of Paul to Timothy. Lord, we thank you for the heritage of faith that we are able to claim and to pass on. And Lord, even through the offerings this morning, we pray that you would bless that heritage of faith. And now, Lord, open your word to us and speak to us the words of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the purpose of life, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a sincere heart. I thank God as I constantly, night and day, remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that my joy may be fulfilled. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which lived first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And now I am persuaded lives also in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God that is in you through the laying out of my hands. For we did not receive from God a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. To us, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a great day with baptism and Mother's Day, and we look around and the, the sun is shining, and what was Diane's fourth one? God is good, right? God is good. This day we praise God, and today we praise God especially for the blessing of a heritage of faith. We look at the baptism of infants, and in our tradition, our understanding, we, we label it a sacrament. Because we believe that while Brian and Katie took promises and we made promises, that God himself was involved in this activity. Not that the pastor's hands contain some magic, but that God has instructed us and chosen this means to act. That through faith, we receive this mark of God on us. Through faith. Now you might say, wait a second, Zane at this point in his life is completely unable to express any faith. So how can this gift of God be received through faith? In baptism, it is the faith of the community that receives this gift. The faith of Brian and Katie. The faith of grandparents. The faith of a community of believers a heritage of faith throughout generations. Now, we understand we're not saved by our parents' faith. Not directly, anyway. But what a gift to be raised in a family that teaches you constantly about God's love, about God's care, about the fact that God is king and ruler in the world. What a blessing to be brought to church, to hear the stories of Jesus, to hear the stories of the Old Testament. To know, to be told day after day that God is present and active, that God is loving and that God is guiding you toward obedience. 
And so today, so many of us in this congregation should be giving, fa- giving thanks for the faith of parents and grandparents, for the faith of those who founded Emmanuel Church, who built a building, and we know how much work that is. But we think farther back too, those who founded First Church in town more than 100 years ago. And we can trace our faith farther back. We look at, at things like the Reformation or farther back than that, missionaries who took that gospel of Jesus Christ and brought it to Europe. And the first one of those for whom we know the story is the Apostle Paul. Paul himself speaks of the blessing of the heritage of our faith. He says, I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers, as my ancestors did. Now, we might wonder about this a little bit. If you know Paul's story, Paul was a Jew of the Jews. Paul was a Pharisee. And he was dramatically converted to follow Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, King Jesus, Messiah Jesus. The one the Jews had been hoping for and longing for and that God had promised throughout the Old Testament. But there's an underlying question in this whole passage about a Jewish heritage and Christianity. Messiah Jesus, the same word as Christ. And you notice that when Paul writes these first verses, in those first couple verses, three times over, he says, not the typical Jesus Christ. He says, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, King Jesus, Messiah Jesus. The great blessing of a heritage of faith is that Paul's faith was not just any religion, but he could look back on the Jewish religion that was was pointing, was looking ahead to the coming of this King, this Messiah. And he says he can do this with a clear conscience because he is being faithful to the faith that he has received. He is being faithful to the Old Testament faith. And I say, wait a minute. The Old Testament faith was about about keeping the law, about ceremonies and and sacrifices. How is he faithful in keeping that faith? The Old Testament was always not just about the ceremonies that were taking place, but what those ceremonies pointed to. That when the Passover lamb was slain, it was pointing to the one who would really cover us from our sins and would redeem us from, from death. That when the, the goat was slain on the Day of Atonement and the blood was brought into the very Holy of Holies, it was looking forward to the time when Jesus would give his own blood for us. They were always pointing ahead. And so Paul can say with a sincere heart, with a clear conscience, I am living out the faith of my ancestors. Paul knew that Jesus Christ had kept the law for him. That no matter how hard he tried, he wasn't keeping it. That Jesus Christ fulfilled all the ceremonies. And that in baptism, we are in Jesus. We have died with Jesus. And Paul's Jewish heritage is something he shares with Timothy. Timothy was raised by a faithful mother and grandmother. Grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Timothy's father was a Greek and we don't, he doesn't seem to be involved in the faith story. and We really don't know more of his story. But Paul talks about this faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And Paul was introduced to Timothy probably as these women saw this traveling man who who knew the Jewish law. And they said, we want our son to know this because the women weren't taught the fullness of, of their faith. And so they said, we want our son, I want my son to know this. And asking Paul to, to teach him. And Paul is able to teach him out of his Jewish heritage and able to teach Timothy about the faith. And Paul even becomes a surrogate father for Timothy 
And I just want to take a minute to note how we can do this in community. It is so important this morning that we as a community, some of you relatives, some of you members of Emmanuel Church, some of you believers who have joined us and maybe won't be with us again, but this is a community of faith, and we take a promise that as part of a community of faith, we are going to teach a young child to know and to love and to serve Jesus Christ. And that's so important because as parents, we can't do everything. Some of us at some point in time may end up not having mother or father, not having, or we, but we see that, that God works not just through the, the natural mother and father, but God works through a community. We do this in, in community unofficially with mentors and teachers and coaches and, and people that maybe our children work for or they're just friends or we, see, we do it more formally through foster care and adoption and what great opportunities we have to bless young children with a heritage of faith. And maybe some of them with a heritage of faith that they didn't have, like Paul could give to Timothy, whose, whose father didn't know the Jewish religion, and he could teach him. And then, of course, Paul brings the great addition, the fulfillment of that faith, to know Jesus Christ which would seem that Lois and Eunice accepted as well. So Timothy, the young man, has a heritage. His mother, his grandmother, and now a surrogate father in Paul. To Timothy, my dear son. To Timothy, my dear son. We praise God for that heritage. Mothers, fathers, grandparents, those who pass on the faith from one generation to the next. But maybe there is something missing. missing. How can we as a community add in? How can we open doors so that children can be in those mentoring situations with a good Christian boss or a coach or a teacher or programs like GEMS or cadets or youth groups where people just offer their lives to share that life with our children, with our young people. For example, my children have not had a lot from their grandparents. Between geography and disease, they haven't had a lot of input from their grandparents through the years. But through the years, we've had different surrogates who have made up for some of that lack. Yeah. In Papa, it was Grandma Carol, and everybody knew Grandma Carol, but she was Grandma Carol. And there have been others I can look around and see who have gone to Grandparents Day or taken my children to your home while another was being born. I can look around and see those stories and say, this is a community of faith. Praise God for that heritage of faith. And there are ways where all of you in this community can be a blessing. Where you can be that surrogate mother or father, or you can be that coach, or you can fill in for that grandparent. And that's the blessing of the heritage that we have in family, but beyond family, in the community of believers. So we have a blessing of of that heritage. It's a gift from God. But what do we do with it? We must build on that heritage of faith. Paul writes to Timothy, and at this point in time, Timothy is a young pastor or elder in the church in Ephesus. He says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. The picture here is of Timothy's ordination to that office of of elder or pastor within the body of Christ there in Ephesus. And the laying of hands of the community, which we'll see in a few weeks when we ordain our elders and our deacons. The laying of hands on the community is the idea of, of God pouring out his Holy Spirit. The sign in the Old Testament was with the anointing of oil, but it's that that recognition that, first of all, there are gifts already present. It's not like Timothy's going from zero, he had no gifts, to now he's ordained and blessed and he has gifts. But there's also something real going on here. There are gifts that Timothy has that have been recognized. There's a faith that that God has given him that's been growing, and, and God has put these gifts in him. But then there's also, in that 
community gathering around him and laying hands on him, very much like we did with baptism this morning. That God has chosen this way to be involved in the process of gifting, of raising up the gifts that he has given in this young leader. That God has chosen through baptism to say, this is the way I'm going to mark Zane as my own. And he's given us that, that gift. So fan that into flame. How will we build on that heritage? How will Zane build on that heritage of faith? What will he do with with the gifts that God has given him? Fan it into flame. Now think about that image a little bit. The spark is there. The the fuel is there. What do you do when you fan something into flame? Or the picture of of the bellows and you're you're blowing over it. You're, You're adding oxygen to it. You're adding the airflow to it. To take what's already there and make it burn faster, and make it burn brighter, and make it burn hotter. In, in a forge, it's the idea to, to be able to soften the iron. But I want to I want to take another picture of this, that we take this foundation of a heritage of faith, and we build on the foundation. If you watch that building come come up in the back there, first you know they dug down deep and they they put in footings, and then put in the concrete and the and the rebar, but. What's the point if you leave it there? You don't pour the foundation to leave the foundation. God doesn't give us a faith to say, okay, we're done. You're saved. That's all we need to do. No, we're to build on this faith. If Zane would grow up and know Jesus Christ but never talk about it, not pass it on to the next generation, not take opportunities to parent, to mentor, to teach, to share life. What a loss. What a shame. We have these opportunities in youth groups and children in worship and nursery, opportunities to help a young man to know how to father, who maybe didn't have a father that taught him everything, to help a young young mother. Timothy is a leader in this congregation. And he will lead, and he will grow, and he will build in that congregation. He'll take the, the foundation, he'll take the two-by-fours, and, and, and build. But that building also means undergoing a bit of stress. It means I can't just always do what I want to do. The last eight weeks, I counted up, there's been at least 22 people working through eight different meetings, not to mention oversight from the executive committee and the council. There have been emails, there have been reports providing leadership to Emmanuel's ministries for the next year and beyond. We're going to talk a lot more about that next week. But these people were willing to give time and energy to figure out how to get together in, with short notice to build on a foundation. Through our relationships, formal and informal, we build on that foundation. but we don't do it all just in our own strength. We need to make the effort. We need to allow ourselves to undergo the stress of putting in the time, the energy. But also, this blessing from God is something real. I know it, it, it was hard for me growing up to think of, say, a sacrament like baptism as something more than just, well, that's what we do. But it is. God has chosen this means to work. I don't know why, but God has chosen this means to work. God has chosen the means of of Timothy's ordination to work. But the picture that's constant through it all is God is working through his Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. And so when Paul's talking to Timothy about this gift given through the laying on of his hands, again, it's not that Paul's hands are magical or that ordination is magical. This is the way God has chosen to work. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Spirit. Now in this case, little s, spirit given to us, but given to us by the Holy Spirit, capital S. Buttressing our faith. And I just have to take a moment. 
For all those of you who love Reformed three-point sermons, you don't get those very, for me that terribly often, but here you got it today. Three B's, and uh, there's your three points, okay? Blessing, building, buttressing. All right. I love that word, buttressing, okay? You have to come up with that? Come on, Cindy. You're laughing at me. This is a picture of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral in France. Somewhere in my history degree, I got introduced to architecture of the Middle Ages. The flying buttress was an amazing thing. You see, when they were building cathedrals in the Middle Ages, they wanted these cathedrals to stretch to the sky. These are built of masonry, so stonework, brickwork. And some of them, those ceilings are over 100 feet high. Now, how do you take stonework? You don't have concrete yet, I don't think. You certainly don't have rebar going all the way up that. How do you take stonework and make it stand 100 feet high? Because there's great pressure. Now, the inward pressure you can deal with with the inside walls somewhat and the, and the walls of the building. But how do you deal with that outward pressure? Because you can't make stone stand that high. The mortar's not going to hold it. How do you deal with that outward pressure? And there was this innovation called the flying buttress. Now, I don't know how well we can see this, but if you see, here's the cathedral wall itself. This is a stonework, and then there's, there's a foundation down here. You can kind of see it there. But that stress is pushed out. That outward stress is pushed out onto those other foundations. Well, what's going on here? Okay, so we talked about a heritage of faith, right? A blessing of that heritage of faith. And we build on that faith, but we can't do that all in our own power. And so it needs to be buttressed. It needs to be supported. We might have a faith that's a heritage from mother and grandmother and family and church. But God wants to do great things through us. Don't ever think he doesn't. We're supposed to build on that foundation. And even that community of faith is not enough. We need God's strength. So Paul, writing to Timothy, says, you don't have a spirit of timidity. There, there's no can't in this. There's no refusing to build on the foundation. There's no refusing to grow because it's too much work. There's no cowardice to be scared to live out our faith. As Christians, we were marked by God in baptism. We are gifted by the Holy Spirit. We have no excuse for not building on this foundation of faith. We have a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. I want to think about this as a triangle. We have a spirit of power, a forcefulness of character. We can use authority boldly. We can forge ahead. We can do great things. The part of the triangle that pushes up is the power. But power just on its own is problematic. It can be corrupted by selfish purposes, selfish ends. Power given by God has a purpose. And that purpose is love. And so love is the foundation, the bottom of the triangle. The gifts of God given by God's Spirit are all about extending God's love. Extending the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And then there's eight more. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They're all part of, of love. Power used for the purpose of love. God-given power, God's purpose for that power is to extend his love, to build his kingdom. They're, they're the same thing. But all of this then is guided by self-discipline. Some translations say a sound mind. In other words, God gave you a brain. Use your brain. God gave it to you for a reason. Avoid excesses, things that lead to selfish indulgence, things that lead to recklessness in using the gifts of God. So we want to bless young children through relationships that radiate Christ's love. I want to give you an example. Uh, let's just take the cadet program. Cadets, if you're a guest with us and don't know what that is, it's a program for boys from 4th through 8th grade. Men are mentoring them, use a lot of projects, camping, um, so a lot of project-based stuff. Now, to say we're not timid, that means 
We don't refuse to use the gifts and opportunities God has given. We make use of them. If we've got the time and the energy, the, the skills to be involved in the cadetting program, okay, great, we do it. Not timid. Power. Now you're going to say, yeah, is this power? Yes. So maybe one of the things that God has given you is you are good at fishing. And you're good at teaching boys how to fish. And say, as a cadet leader, you take a special interest in my son and you teach him to fish. Now I know that none of you did that very well because I'm not a very good fisherman and I had two trips to the boundary waters with zero fish. So you didn't do that one, but okay. But there's a power given to you, a gift of God given to you, even an ability as simple as the ability to be able to fish. And it's a power God has given you for a purpose, to bless, to love, to make a relationship, to teach a skill. To teach a skill, but to teach also you know, how to be a Christian man. And maybe in that way you're filling in for my weakness. If I have a son who loves that and I'm no good at it, it's great to have somebody else who can t- teach that. Okay, but then what's the purpose? Now, negative side. If you said, well, it's a selfish purpose. Maybe, uh, maybe a selfish purpose would be, well, you want to get more fish to take home. Or maybe a selfish purpose would be, you want to prove that you're better than I am in some way. But a loving purpose would be, you give my son joy, accomplishment, a chance to share in life, a chance to be mentored by someone else. You introduce him to some of that power of community. The purpose is love. The foundation is love. But now, even given God, using God-given power, with a purpose of love, you still need that third part of the triangle, the self-discipline. Because you could get carried away. You could take too much time for my son away from family or school. Or without wishing it, you could damage uh, the relationship between my son and I. You, know, you could say something like, soccer's silly, you should spend your time fishing. Okay, it's just one example, but we have a spirit of power. We have God-given gifts and abilities and authority. We build on that foundation of love, of care for one another, of care for the world around us, of the love that Christ showed us, first of all, when he loved us while we were yet his enemies and died for us. And self-discipline, using your reason, your brain, to buttress our faith, to support our faith, to, using God's strength, build on the foundation of faith with more than our own strength. We start. So many of us have been blessed with a heritage of faith. Mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers. And some of us who might be lacking any of those, we have a whole community of faith that can step in and bless us and bless that next generation like Paul did with Timothy. His father was a Greek and apparently not interested in matters of faith. And Paul stepped in and trained this young man in the Jewish religion and trained him in the fulfillment of that which was in Jesus Christ. And he raised up Timothy to the place of leadership in kingdom work. Now, we want that for Zane. We want that for all the children who are part of our community. For children, we have the opportunity to build relationships with. And these relationships that radiate Christ's love. This is what we want for them and for their families. That they will receive the blessing of a heritage of faith. And then on that faith, they will build. Passing it on to the next generation. Their children. Their friends' children. The congregation's children the community's children as we reach out with that love of Jesus Christ and to know that we don't do this just on our own. You have the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Let's pray together.